Welcome to the regular meeting of the Planning Commission this Tuesday, November 1st. Um, we will start out with the Pledge of Allegiance and Commissioner Greg Heath will lead us and if the commissioners can all mute their devices right now. Got it. Okay, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> We're still Here. waiting for a couple of our commissioners, uh, but we'll go ahead with the uh, roll call for who we've got right now, and we'll hopefully have a couple more join us soon. Yeah, Dennis is having some technical difficulties. He's sounds like he's trying to get on, so... Um... I told him if he couldn't get on to call us. Okay. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Carranza? Here. Commissioner Heath? Here. Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Here. And for the record, Vice Chairperson Keene is in excused absence, and we're waiting on Hughes and Schmidt. So, we have four present. Okay, thank you. Um, can I get an approval of the agenda, please? Motion to approve. I'll make I'll a motion. <laughs> and Victoria, will... did you second that? Yeah, I will second Commissioner Heath. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, Commissioner Heath? Yes. Commissioner Carranza? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Okay, we'll move into the public comment portion of the meeting, um, which is reserved for anybody who'd like to address the commission on something that is not on the agenda tonight that we might have uh, jurisdiction over. Uh, speakers will be limited to three minutes. If there, are and please state your name for the record. If, the, if you're on the Zoom and would like to um, Make a public comment at this time. Please raise your hand. And if you're on your phone, uh, star nine. Okay, I don't see anybody for public comment. So we will um, go ahead and move on. If I could get a motion to approve the consent calendar, please. I'll, I'll make motion. a motion. <laughs> I think Victoria got it. Somebody want to second that? I'll second, I'll second it. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. We're all jumping on it. <laughs> all right. Uh, Commissioner Carranza? Yes. Commissioner He? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Okay. Um, then we'll go ahead and move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. Uh, for each of the items, the following items, the public will be given the opportunity to speak. After the staff report, the chair will open the public hearing and invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to make any comments. Members of the public may be invited to provide testimony to the commission following the applicant. Speakers should state their name for the record and can address the commission for three minutes. After all public com comments have been received, the public hearing will be closed and the commission will discuss the item and take appropriate actions. Uh, we have one item, tentative subdivision map AT uh, at 10165 El Camino Real. And if I can get any uh, ex parte disclosures, we'll start with Greg. Do you have any ex parte on this item? Uh, no ex parte. Uh, Jason? No ex parte. Uh, Dennis? No ex parte. Victoria? I did speak with the arborist that was... Uh, the contact information was given to us, Rodney Thurman, today. Okay, thank you. And I have none. So we'll go ahead and turn the time over to Mariah. Is Mariah available? Or she's still having time? Yeah. Okay, great. Kelly will be doing the presentation and I'm on my phone, so we're tag teaming. So thank you. Yes, this is for the condominium subdivision at 10165 El Camino Real. 
And when we took, take a look at the zoning map, this is in the high density multifamily zoning district that RMF 24 across El Camino is residential multifamily 10. Um, to the north, that pink you see is commercial neighborhood. And then um, to the south is the public zone in that purple. The property right now is 4.73 acres. And here we can see an aerial view. So the property is developed on the front of the parcel. Um, and then the development that was approved that we'll be talking about in the condominium subdivision is in the back there where the star is. So some background about the project. Um, you may remember this came to the, well, it says came to the Planning Commission actually almost exactly one year ago, but right now um, the project, it's called California Manor with uh, an existing 95 unit building that serves the low income senior population. Um, the new building that was approved last year is a 76 unit low income senior housing building. And just a correction, I think the staff report said that the Senior housing was limited to 55, the ages 55 and up, and I was corrected, um, this is actually 62 and up. So this is housing for those who are 62 and up. Um, so in addition to the actual building being approved at that time in November, the approval also included site improvements as well as a two lot parcel map. So the project being proposed now is to still subdivide the front of the property from the back so that it would create two lots. Um, but then there would also be 76 airspace condominiums in that back building. So each of those units that was approved in that previous project would be their own airspace condominium units. Um, Lot one along El Camino, the one closest to El Camino is 2.95 acres, while lot two, the one in the back is 1.78 acres. The municipal code requires multifamily zoning district properties to be at least 0.5 acres, so both of these meet the minimum lot size. The municipal code does require that the lot that's furthest from the street or um, the public access way own a portion of the property um, accessing that street itself. So basically this would require a flag configuration. So originally the project was approved um, with the parcel in the back and then there was a strip leading down to El Camino Real. And this is the um, tract map that's being uh, presented tonight. So the Planning Commission does have the ability to approve an exemption from that flag requirement. And that's what the applicant is seeking, just to divide off this back portion from the front. As you can see, the flag would have been located over the existing parking for lot one. So it really wouldn't have served a purpose. And the fact that the units are now being condoed on lot two having that access way um, just because of the code might have actually caused additional issues if the units were to be sold off in the future. So as I've mentioned, the zoning code does allow the planning commission to waive this requirement if it um, can find that the easement is sufficient to serve the proposed real, rear parcel and that the flag is not in an area that's feasible to provide access. And based on um, the way that these lots are configured, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission does approve this exemption to not require that the rear lot own that access way to El Camino. So we've also added a condition that requires on-site easements for ingress, egress, pedestrian traffic, drainage, utilities, et cetera, everything that might um, affect each parcel because the lot will act as a singular property as a whole and that's how it's been approved, although it will be on two separate parcels. So the easement is really important. Um, we are requiring that easement documents be recorded concurrently with that final map, as well as the easements being shown on the final map when it's recorded. 
The project is categorically exempt, a class 15 exemption from CEQA because it is including a minor land division. And in addition to the regular findings that are typical for a subdivision, um, this one does include one more about the subdivision without a flag. Um, so the Planning Commission does need to find that the easement is sufficient instead of the flag portion to serve the proposed rear parcel and that a flag um, on this lot would be in an area that's not feasible to provide access and staff has provided a finding as well as justification in this presentation as to why we would support that. Um, because the flag would not serve a purpose in this situation. And I just wanted to go back to one of the conditions of approval to correct it from the ages 55 and up for senior housing to 62 and up. Um, and this condition is reiterating a condition that was on the previous approval, but we wanted to reiterate it with this one. So this requires a deed restriction to be entered into between the city of Atascadero and the applicant deed restricting all of the units on site, including the existing units and the new units to be low income affordable units for ages 62 and up for a term of no less than 55 years. And this deed restriction will be required to be recorded prior to issuing building permits. So staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission adopt the resolution approving this tract map, approving a two lot subdivision, as well as 76 residential airspace condominium units on the resulting lot two based on findings and subject to conditions of approval. As always, the Commission has the alternatives to approve modifications to the project the commission can refer the item back to staff or the commission may deny the permit and specify the reasons for denial. And staff's available for questions. Thank you, Mariah. Uh, any questions from planning commissioners of staff? Have, Victoria? Yeah, thank you, commissioner. Um, I have just a question about the, I'm just really curious about the years for the deed restriction. So how do you all come up with that? So the 55 year deed restriction, are you referring to the 55 years? Yes. So that is required per um, the state density bonus and Kelly, correct me if it's somewhere else, but I know the state density bonus requires a minimum of 55 years. Um, and they were, they did ask for some concessions with the first approval um, for parking and some other things. And so in order to approve those concessions, we have to record this 55 year deed restriction per state law. Okay, great. Any other questions of staff? Dennis? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and I, I want to premise this by saying I'm not against this project at all. Um, uh, I do find, though, I'm going to start with under the conditions of approval. Uh, condition approval 1A, there's a misspelling in that. Uh, there's the word pone, and I guess it should be one, maybe not pone. And then on uh, condition number six, I'm kind of inquisitive about it talks about Quimby fees and then it says that the uh, fee to be paid at, should be at the time of subsequent applications. And I'm kind of puzzled about what subsequent application there would be. Um, but uh, one of the issues that I'm having, uh, and again, I'm, I'm not against the project at all, um, Mariah had used the word zoning code. Now. I, I had, I was puzzled by uh, the requirement or the uh, the fact that we, as a commission, can grant an exception to the uh, flag lot, which I don't. Again, I agree that that should be done. Uh, I found, though, in the subdivision ordinance, a section that dealt with granting exceptions, and in that it talks about there being 
uh, one, two, three, four, five findings that need to be made to grant an exception, and we only have one. And uh, I'm wondering if that's something different uh, within the zoning code that allows that to happen or not. And so those are my questions and concerns, that's all. Um, so to address the second question, you are required to make those uh, standard subdivision findings. Those are detailed in the staff report and the explanation of each of those is in the staff report. But um, for the purposes of the presentation, I just wanted to highlight the one that's more unusual to the subdivision, the, uh, the one that's special, but you do have uh, to make the required well, findings. I'm reading just the one that says finding for approval of a deep lot subdivision without a flag. Uh, it's on page 16, item two at the top, and it gives a fact. So are the, the other five are in the, in, in the, in the, uh... Yeah, they should be right before that. The first five it should say number one, um, finding for the approval. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. That And, and Dennis, I know you asked about the Quimby fees and I can jump in a little bit on that. We charge our um, Quimby fees as our uh, development impact fee for parkland and those are charged with the building permits. The Quimby fee is at the time of the building permit? Oh, it's within, okay, I hear so you. So that's, I hear that's you. the subsequent application is the construction permit, yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, I have a question now. So they're stating that the um, that they don't anticipate putting together the um, the track map at this time for the condom map. Um, but I assume that when they do, they'll be required to submit um, all the other forms. Like um, there must be an HOA or some other condition covenants and stuff since they'll be sharing space that will have to be submitted for re review of the city staff. Yes, that's correct. And I think part of that condition was um, discussing maintenance uh, agreements with um, within those documents that need to be recorded concurrently. Okay. Any other questions of, by the commissioners? Okay, I don't see any, so we'll last, go with it. Oh, oh, Victoria. Last question, um, just making sure. So when I was reading through, there will only be one lot that will have the utilities for both lots. Is that correct? Uh, the utilities for lot two in the back and the new units, they will go over lot one. So they're proposed um, over the lot ones, basically their driveway area. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, if there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and invite the applicant's representative to address us at this time. Looks like Scott's here. If you wanna unmute yourself, Scott. And... Thank you, Scott Stokes, Pubgrade Engineering. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, um, yeah, we just, um, we're moving forward quickly on this project actually. Um, and I, I don't really have anything much to add to Mariah's presentation. It's just, we're here to answer any questions and we're hoping you approve it. Okay, thank you, Scott. Any questions of the applicants, representative? Okay, seeing none, then we will um, open up the public hearing um, and invite anybody from the public that would like to um, speak on this matter to if you're on Zoom, if you would raise your hand. I see Jerry Lynn would like to make a comment. Hi, you guys. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I bet I live in Rancho del Bordo, so I'm kind of directly behind this new development. I was in on the first couple of meetings. Um, I see it's advanced <laughs> quite a bit. So my, my question is behind us, the, the oak trees that back up to us, has anything changed with that, with this 
airspace condominium, um, and I guess I should back up and say, what is airspace condominium? And is that changed from the initial aspect of this development from just extending California Manor? Terry, as soon as you're done with your, this is only for comments and we will get to you as soon as, and we'll gotcha. answer, we'll have staff okay, answer. So in that. summary, yes, the question about the trees, we don't want to lose our privacy and, you know, how it shades our properties and, and then just helping me understand the new term, airspace condos. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. It doesn't look like we actually have any other attendees. Um, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And if I could have one of the staff answer uh, Jerry's questions. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take the, the just the basic question on what an airspace condominium is. It simply really means to allowing for the individual ownership of the actual units that are gonna be built inside these apartments, I'll call them, but then they'll become condominiums. It doesn't mean that they'll own, own the space of their condominium um, as a unit. So it's similar to any other condominium development where they have a common interest in the land, but just own the actual unit itself and not the land around it. Thanks, Phil. And um, I'll jump in and say that this does not change the uh, proposed development or what was approved last year in terms of the tree removals. Um, the last approval uh, approved 15 trees to be removed. I believe they were mostly within that um, where the star is on the screen right now within the actual building envelope, but this is not changing anything about the exterior or the site plan, this approval. Okay, thank you, Mariah. Okay, I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for any um, further discussion or a motion if anybody has one. Um, I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, approve the draft resolution uh, approving SBDV 220077. Oh, um, vesting tent of map, track map 3204 for two lot subdivision with 76 airspace condominiums on parcel two located at AT or at APN 0304610004, along with the findings and conditions. And Dennis, I just want to clarify, um, does that include, Kelly, can you back up one, please? Just the change yes. condition. Yes, it does. It does include the change in ages from 55 to 62. Thank you. And the typo on the uh, condition one, right? Yeah, and the, and the word pwned. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Can I get a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. Annette, roll call, please. Okay. Um, Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner He? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Carranza? Yes. Chairperson Vanden Eickhoff? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. And thank you to the applicants for bringing this before us today. Um, so we'll go right to our director's report, Phil. Do you have a director's report for us? Actually, oh, there's commissioner comments oh, yeah. and reports. Do you have any? Yeah, I guess I could just say. Yeah, let me, sorry, I was muted there for a second. Sorry, I was reading sequel. It was getting really interesting. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Hold on a second, Phil. We'll, go, we'll do some commissioner comments and reports if there are any. Anybody have anything, <laughs> comments or reports? Dennis? I do have a question. It, it recently came to my attention on the uh, ADUs that the city is uh, um, having designed, which are which are great. Uh, there was a discussion about possibly not requiring 
uh, soils reports for those projects for foundations. And I'm wondering if that policy will be used for all ADUs or just those particular ADUs that the city is sponsoring through the architectural elevations or the plans that they're having approved. Is that a question or a statement? The question. It's a question. I'm wondering if it. Chair, do you want to jump I, in and uh, answer that? Design my way? own ADU. Well, could I have that same exemption for the soils report? Right now, we are probably not going to extend that outside of the stock use in terms of having a stock. Um, standard footing depth and not having the engineering, but we're talking about that further. So more to come. Is there the reason why it won't be allowable for everyone or for all ADUs? It's, it just seems unfair. I, I um, It's something that we're in discussion with right now with our building official to find out what kind of discretion we have. Okay. and um, how we can do that. It's a very sensitive topic amongst building officials. So I, I, you know, without him being present, I'd hate to really delve into that further. But recently we have been looking for ways to streamline the development review process for all ADUs. Part of that process is developing the stock plans, which will come along with sort of, um, you know, an engineering exemption if they follow the, the standard footing uh, in certain scenarios. But um, I've got to get the comfort level up with my team to be able to extend that further. We're working on that essentially. Okay. Um, sum it up. So we hope to get there. I would agree. And I think it's a good comment. Okay. Thank you. Well, okay. Bill, why don't you give us your director's report now? All right. Well, we're already in no into November. I can't even believe it. So we got through our first November hearing tonight. Great job, everybody. Uh, coming up next, though, on the 15th, we will be looking at, I think we've alluded to this before, is an RV storage yard out there by the river, out there on Sycamore, adjacent to the Sycamore Industrial Park. That's on the water company's property. So that'll be coming to us to look for um, that project uh, on a conditional use permit level. It already went to the DRC. And then on December 6th, we'll be looking at that vacant lot next to the fence factory for a new equipment yard and Bobcat dealer, it's called Giffen. They're developing that there with a new building and they'll do some outdoor display and they're gonna have some of their rental equipment out there as well. And they're gonna have a, a building on that site and new parking lot, new street improvements for El Camino. Nice little project. So we'll be looking at that as well for a conditional use permit. That's what's coming up on the radar, but pretty soon we'll also be bringing some of the general plan stuff to you. We're gonna be doing a lot of outreach on that early in the year for 2023. And the next thing that's gonna happen with that project is we're gonna be going to the city council. Um, we're hoping in December, hoping on the, uh, the 13th of December with um, an update on that project and to let them know about the background information that the consultant team has been collecting. And then before long, we'll be making a visit to the planning commission as well, and probably multiple times on that big project. So more to come on that, but that's going to take a lot of our bandwidth in this coming year for sure. But other than that, I'd be happy to answer your questions. I couldn't help but giggle about the RV thing up on Sycamore Road, you know, by the, out there in the van by the river, I'm thinking of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is, is that going to be an, an actual RV park down there, too, or is it just no. storage? No, no it's storage. storage. Unfortunately, yeah. it's just storage. They've got to go somewhere. And, I, and the positive we always think about these things is, well, perhaps it gets it off people's properties, at least, and puts it in one nice, neat location. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the idea there. And if it's designed right and fenced right and landscaped right, then... Um, it should be good. Well, we'll see. Great. Any other, any questions of Phil? Oh, I guess I have a preemptive question that I could ask at the next meeting for the item we're talking about right now, the RVs, but what is the current, what is the current status of 
RVs that are parked along that Sycamore Road now? Status. Well, as far as the city goes, I mean, there are some that hang out there quite a bit. And yeah, so there are some, there is some along the railroad right away there and Union Pacific right away that occasionally park in there. And uh, if they violate our terms of parking, which is max of 72 hours, we have to move them out. But it's very challenging to work with that. We're constantly chasing that around. Uh, it's not legal. They're essentially camping, living out there. So um, it's something that our police department works with constantly. Yeah, I find it uncanny that we're like having an RV storage facility when people need to live in their RVs. So it's a very interesting uh, project. And that whole element of living in an RV is a whole other interesting topic. And yeah. the, you know, the county uh, has been experimenting with that over the last few years with their safe parking lot. And um, those, those particular installations are very challenging. It's a very challenging situation, but it's certainly a need um, that's unmet in our region. And there's a lot of areas um, especially down in San Luis Obispo in certain areas where you do see a lot of occupied RVs um, on streets. Any, anything else, Rachel? Okay, well, it's a nice short meeting. We'll go ahead and adjourn to our next uh, regular meeting, which will be held on November 15th. And until then, we'll uh, say goodbye to everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.